Rangapur Rebellion or it is also known as the Rangapur Dhing. So try to remember the local names. Yesterday also we have seen two specific names that is Santal Kol and Mulga Munda Ulgulan. So try to remember these names also. So Rangapur Rebellion it is also known as Rangapur Dhing. Right. So it is directed this uprising has also happened in Bengal only. Uh, right. It has directed against the oppressive revenue policies of East India Company. Good evening students, welcome back to Plutus IAS. Right, today is our 68th day and today we are going to study about the peasant uprisings. So yesterday we have studied the tribal uprisings and uh, along with that we will also uh, today we will study the peasant uprisings. Uh, some of the I mean third category uh, category I was saying the civilian uprisings. So some of the uprisings uh, civilian uprisings I am I have already I mean I have tried to club with the peasant uprisings also. So whatever the peace, uh, civil <coughs> civilian uprisings happened that are major reasons are the reasons associated with the farmers only so because of the uh, we can say lifestyle or livelihood of the farmers has been disturbed so because of that disturbance only the uh, associated population uh, so you know very well most of the people at that time even today also most of the people are associated with agriculture only so at that time we can say almost 80 to 85 percent of the population was associated uh, with the farmers so whenever the vf life of the farmers has been disturbed every other sections of the society have been impacted so majority of the society is also <coughs> was also practicing farming only farming only so that is the reason uh, the mostly the whatever the civilian rebellions happened they are also closely associated with the issues of the peasants so because of that reason i have also included them in this topic right so example best examples are previously i uh, also i was mentioning the uh, sanyasi revolt sanyasi revolt actually it is led by sanyasis and fakirs but the reason for these people revolting or rebelling against the British rule is so these sannyasis they were depending on the farmers. So farmers, you know, sannyasis and fakis, they lead their life by arms uh, through begging. They lead their lives. So whenever the farmers are prosperous and they have sufficient food at their disposal to consume, so they also give away some food, some food to these fakirs and sannyasis because of the policies of the britishers the farmers or peasants at the time farmers are uh, popularly being called as the peasants right Pe peasants are riots right so uh, i mean farmers then else became poor food was not sufficient for them even they do not have the food for their own consumption because of the policies of the britishers so the way of life associated with these farmers uh, especially the life of the sannyasis and fakirs that has also been disturbed so they because of this reason they have revolted against the rule of the britishers similar way i have yesterday taken one more examples also the movement of telangana uh, telangana armed struggle so the farmers in the telangana region especially the northern telangana region the farmers have been suffering so uh, apart from that various sections of the society like women etc and especially the lower caste people they have faced a lot of uh, we can say difficulties so they have uh, they have subjected to forced labor atrocities they have been subjected to atrocities by the machinery of the nizam and uh, the officials local officials uh, so they have faced a lot of atrocities by by these authorities so they also chose to uh, uh, rebel rebel against the nizam's rule 
uh, so whenever they also revolted they targeted the landlords also so the landlords in the telangana region the region they they i mean they will be known with a different name they are called as duras and the places where they live uh, just like a fort like uh, house that is known as ghadi so duras the landlords they have been i mean they used to be called as duras and the place where they live that is known as ghadi so these two words they are known for oppression and uh, i mean oppression against the uh, people common people especially the lower caste people and also they have uh, uh, i mean committed atrocities against uh, not only uh, the lower caste people but also against women etc so everybody has been uh, exploited by the authorities of the nizam so these uh, kind of can be categorized into the civilian uprising because the major issues uh, that are associated with these uh, movements also the reasons are similar so the we can say uh, not so good position of the farmers or worsening position of the farmers so because of that reason also all only the civilian uprisings have also been started so uh, because of all these reasons i am clubbing those movements also uh, in the, with the peasants peasant movements or peasant rebellions all right so before going into the individual movements we will bro broadly try to understand the issues or we can say problems why the farmers or the peasants have chosen to revolt against the british rule so first is land revenue systems so you know very well the britishers have brought in three land revenue systems the zamindari system the raitwari system and the mahalwari system right so you will study in the regular classes in detail about these systems so you name any type of system any type of land revenue system the only i mean the final objective is to exploit or we can say extract extract higher tax or we can say as tax as possible from the peasants so this is the motive whatever uh, may be the uh, tax so whether it is zamindari or whether it is raitwari or whether it is mahalwari the final motive of the britishers is to maximize the tax collection so when they try to uh, maximize the tax collection the farmers or the poor peasants are the ultimate sufferers so this is the major reasons for what are the uh, whatever i mean what are all the revolts have taken place especially the peasant, peasant uh, revolts the major reason is this thing only land revenue right so in some of the tribal movements also we have seen one of the reason as the new land revenue systems that have been introduced by the britishers so it completely changed the earlier or traditional way of uh, life of the tribals not only tribals but also especially the peasants before the introduction of the these particular laws especially the zamindari system the farmers had ownership somewhat some kind of ownership over the land they were tilling what happened with the zamindari system is an intermediary has been introduced uh, between the farmer and the british authority and he has given the ownership of the land the zamindars so the farmers have become once they were owners of the land they had some kind of ownership on the land and just they became the tillers so the zamindar has the right to displace this farmer and give that land parcel of land to any other farmer so in this way uh, the for the owners have become from the uh, the farmers or peasants have become the owners of land to the tenants at will so it is entirely dependent on the will of the zamindar so if the zamindar chooses to remove them he can simply remove them so that is the uh, we can say kind of a cruel policy that has been brought in by the british empire right so raitwari in raitwari system you know very well uh, the british authorities they have appointed collectors they are directly collecting or overseeing the collection of the tax so here also the situation is uh, we can say worse than the zamindari system because the britishers have resorted to uh, unexplainable methods 
for collecting the taxes right so whenever taxes have not been paid they have resorted to violent methods uh, on the peasants for extracting the taxes so those instances also you will see mahalwari system is uh, it is also uh, not not at all good so in all the three systems exploitation was taking place so that is the uh, final motive of the britishers name any tax collection system or land revenue system next one is commercialization of agriculture so this is also one of the foremost reasons so according to the changing needs of the britishers they have forced the indian farmers to cultivate the commercial crops so you know very well indian uh, agriculture system or farming system is known for subsistence agriculture from the throughout the ages so farmers predominantly were producing food grains for their own consumption so whatever the little surplus that uh, i mean they will have the little surplus they used to sell or exchange uh, for other goods and services by uh, from other uh, communities so uh, with the arrival of the britishers they have forced indian farmers uh, uh, in some way or, or the other to cultivate commercial crops best example is cotton cotton tea etc they have forced the indian farmers to uh, cultivate commercial crops so because of this availability of food has been declined availability food of food has de has been declined so the famines have been a recurrent phenomenon in the british i mean during the british rule in india so you know very well we have discussed this in previous classes right so because of the uh, commercialization of agriculture we will see a special movement especially when the farmers have been forced to cultivate the indigo crop that is uh, come to be known as the indigo revolution indigo revolution especially in the champaran region so mahatma gandhi was uh, involved in this movement so we will study in detail about that movement right next is deforestation uh, deforestation also we can say it is one of the reasons right so the british have cleared large areas of forest and agricultural plantations uh sorry they have cleared forest areas huge tracts of forest for agriculture and plantations which disrupted traditional ways of life and livelihood of many tribal people and not only that many uh, peasants and rural people also their uh, lifestyle has been disrupted all right so these are the major reasons uh, for the peasant uh, revolts in india apart from that you can also discuss like the intrusion of the money lenders money lender so uh, you know the case with the money lenders when yesterday we were studying uh, we have discussed about them how they have tried to exploit the poor tribals same way here also they have tried to exploit the peasants so they will give interest sorry loans on exorbitant rates the farmers will not be in a position to pay the loans so in lieu of payment of loans they will take away the land so wherever the farmers are direct ownership of the land that land has been taken away so a particular movement that is known as dakkan riots that has happened in the present maharashtra region dakkan riots so they have happened and uh, during this movements the conriots especially the money lender community has been targeted because of their excesses and because of their uh, we can say exploitative measures so we will also study about this movement the conriots or the con rebellion we will study about that also so broadly these are the reasons uh, for all the peasant movements so apart from that every movement has its specific reasons also so we will try to study each and every individual movement so first movement is first and four movement is uh, sanyasi rebellion so here i am try i have tried to take only the prominent movements many other peasant movements are also there so you try to know the uh, just the movement specific two to three points especially where it has occurred the region and also the time period 
uh, for the present moments. Uh, you might get a question in the prelims examination based on the chronology and the region associated with that particular moment. So whatever the moments here I am taking, I have tried to follow a chronological order, uh, chronological order. Uh, but however, from your side also, you will try to know about some more moments and uh, try to follow a chronological order and especially focus on the region uh, from where that uh, moment has occurred. And uh, right, so briefly try to know whether any leader, special or particular leader associated with the movement. Right, so these are the important things. Right, first is Sanyasi rebellion. So we can categorize it as a socio, uh, some, some people say it is a politico religious movement also, but however, it can be considered as a civilian uprising. However, it has close relation with the peasants. So here, uh, this movement has occurred in the late 18th century, around 1875. So the sannyasis uh, who were <coughs> residing in the, I mean, areas of Bengal, so they have uh, rebellion. Uh, they have rebelled against the British authorities uh, because <coughs> the lifestyle, uh, their lifestyle has increasingly associated with the peasants. So because of the new la land revenue systems, changes in the land revenue system and the exploitation of the farmers, uh, their lifestyle uh, has also been, uh, we can say, devastated or impacted adversely. So the source of their livelihood, the peasants, uh, offerings from the peasants, they have disappeared. So because of that reason, they have chosen to revolt against the British authorities. Right. So, sannyasin uh, and fakirs, if you see the participants, the sannyasis and the fakirs were the pa uh, participants. So, they belonged from various Hindu and the Muslim traditions. So, <coughs> Sufism, you know, in, in uh, uh, Islam. So, in the medieval, when you study the medieval, medieval period, you will study about the Sufism. So, these fakirs basically belong to that Sufi sect. Right. So, they dissatisfied with the social and the political order under the British rule, right. So among them, this, some of them also have belonging to monastic orders. So like I said, the Sufi tradition and the Hinduism also, some special traditions are there, they belong to those traditions. So causes of the rebellion, if you see, disruption of the traditional life, right. So the company's land revenue policies and the commercialization of agriculture. It disrupted the livelihoods of many peasants and artisans. So this in turn impacted the traditional arms giving system that supported the sannyasis and fakirs. So this is the major reason. Their life is well associated with the peasants and somewhat the artisans also who were practicing the, uh, who were running the cottage industries. So because of the uh, East India Company's commercial, commercial processes or policies and uh, new land revenue systems, their life has been affected. Apart from that, there is a religious discontent also. So they thought that British rule undermined the Muslim customs and uh, institutions. Right. So they have seen themselves as the defenders of their respective faiths. Next is anti-colonial sentiment. So this sentiment was uh, was there everywhere, right? So there was general resentment against the rule of the British, and uh, the desire for self-rule it likely fueled the revolt, rebellion. Right. Course of the rebellion, if you see, right? <coughs> the sannyasis and the fakirs they have often armed with the traditional weapons, formed mobile bands, and attacked the British outposts tax collectors and the revenue officers, right. So the rebellion was most active in Bengal and Bihar, with the, especially in regions like Murshidabad and the forest of Baikuntpur. Uh, there we will see frequent occurrence of clashes between the, the these uh, groups, right. So leaders, if we see, it lacked a centralized, uh, centralized leadership, but figures like Majnu Shah, and Chiragali, they have emerged as the 
prominent leader at some course of the some point in the course of the movement right so basically the sanyasi akhadas or they also known as the monasteries they have served as a basis for recruitment training and the planning of the movement so this is about the movement outcome of the movement if you see <coughs> right so at the end of the day the sanyasi rebellion has been suppressed but they posed a significant challenge for several decades to the british authority right so they have the british have responded with a combination of military force and attempts to co-opt some sanyasi groups right, right. so this is the one of the foremost movements to happen so this movement has exposed the british east india company's policies and also it exposed the vulnerability of british east india company's rule in india right right the uh, the outcome of the movement or the major events associated with the movement are the bankim chandra chatopadhyay uh, uh, right he wrote a novel that is anand mat uh, it is kind of fictionalized i mean major source of the inspiration for writing novel uh, this novel is uh, this sanyasi rebellion only so he took some fictitious uh, incident i mean some uh, fictitious in incidents also or for that matter we can say he has fictionalized the movement and he has has written the this particular book anand mat uh, bankim chandra bankim chandra chatterjee right right so this movement also inspired the later nationalist movements and uh, <coughs> it reminded the i mean it has given inspiration for the uh, need for resistance against the british rule right so these are the some of the we can say major issues associated with the movement right so uh, this is the about the movement remember this factual thing uh, anand mat has been written based on the events of the sanyasi rebellion the author of the novel is bankim chandra bankim chandra chattopadhyay right so this is about the sanyasi rebellion next uh, movement it is almost similar to the sanyasi rebellion only it has also happened in the bengal uh, bengal present day west bengal state or for that matter that time bengal state right so the pagalpanthi actually means the followers of a mad path so here also the major uh, participants in the movements are fakirs only fakirs who were being, uh, belonging to the sufi sufism of the islamic i mean sufist sects sect uh, sect in the uh, islamic religion right so however apart from that hindus some elements of hinduism and animism were also involved in the movement so it has the movement also occurred during the late 18th century so around 1875 1880 period only right so the pagalpanthis movement and the sanyasi rebellion they have many similarities so it can be also be considered as a civilian movement or we can also the socio politico socio politico religious movement right right so however uh this movement is confined to we can say east bengal region uh now present day bangladesh region right so if we see the origin of the movement it is founded by karim shah and other disciples of uh sufi fakir uh and other disciples of sufi fakir major leader is karim shah only right so the pagalpanth is blended elements of have blended elements of hinduism sufism and animism right so this belief system it emphasized the social justice and equality challenging the rigid caste hierarchy prevalent in bengal right so they have preached a simple lifestyle and rejected austrianious ritual right so basically the movement has primary attract primarily attracted the followers from uh, tribal communities like garos ajongs dalos bodis etc right so after karim shah's death his son tipu shah he took over and became the prominent leader guiding the movements uh, towards a more militant stance 
right so initially they have focused on the religious practices and the social uh, reform but they have faced increasing hardship due to oppressive land revenue systems and exploitative practices by the zamindars the agents of the british authority so under the tipu shah's leadership the movement movement evolved into a armed struggle against the british raj and the zamindari system so the pagalpanthis they have resisted the tax collection and attacked the houses of the zamindars who imposed harsh taxes right right so the british with their uh, superior military might they have crushed the pagalpanthi rebellion by 1833 so this is the final impact so pagalpanthis they are, i mean most of the things are similar to the sanyasi rebellion only but majorly it has occurred in the east bengal region right so this is about the pagalpanthi movement next another important movement is rangapur rebellion or it is also known as the rangapur dhing so try to remember the local names yesterday also we have seen two specific names that is santal kol and the mulga munda ulgulan so try to remember these names also so rangapur rebellion it is also known as rangapur dhing right so it is directed this uprising has also happened in bengal only uh, right it has directed against the oppressive revenue policies of east india company so location if you see it is happened in the rangapur district of west uh, bengal in around 1783 right participants are both peasants and zamindars uh, we will see a rare instance where the unity between the peasants and also the zamindars so not only the peasants the Jam you should remember one thing that the zamindars uh, who were there under the zamindari system they also used to suffer because of the british policies because the britishers used to change the zamindars at will so uh, let's say a zamindar is unable to collect the targeted tax the zamindar used to be removed and another person used to be appointed for that particular designated land area that is known as zamindari right so the zamindars were also suffering in the british rule so in rangapur thing we will see a rare combination of or we can say collaboration and uh, consensus between the peasants and zamindars and they have together raised the rebellion against the britishers right cause of the movements is excessive revenue demands by the east india company this is one reason uh, exploitative exploitative ijardar system where tax collection rights were auctioned to the highest bidder often leading to ruthless practices so the zamindars land patches have been auctioned so whoever promises to pay a uh, collect high tax and, and pays taxes to the britisher that person is uh, i mean granted that particular land area huge land area and he will become the zamindar for for that region so this has also raised discontent among the zamindars right next is hardship faced by peasants due to high taxes and a decline in agricultural production so these are the major causes <coughs> so if we see the course of the uh, rebellion or uprising it is began in january 1783 and uh, the peasants and zamindars they took control over several er several areas of rangapur the rebels attacked the courts looted grain store uh, grain stores freed prisoners and even set up a parallel administration in the rangapur district right so it also spread to neighboring dinajpur district as well right outcome of the rebellion if you see uh, at the end of the day the british uh, were able to crush the movement after several weeks the main cr uh, culprit the revenue farmer uh, uh, devi singh he escaped major punishment investigations into the causes were conducted right so this uprising exposed the flaws in the ijardar system paving the way for later ram, uh, land reforms 
and the revenue collection by the british administration all right so this is the outcome of the prisoners right so we will see the major parts spent or the leader of the movement is devi singh uh, in the later part of the movement the uh, devi singh he emerged as the major reason right so this is about the rangapur movement rangapur rebellion or the rangapur dehing right next important rebellion is indigo revolt indigo revolt or indigo rebellion we can say it is one of the most most important revolts against the british uh, during the colonial period so it has occurred between 1859 and 16 uh, 1860 right right so it was also happened during the bengal uh, region also at that time so bihar uh, parts of odisha and uh, including the bengal region they were part and parcel of the bengal province large bengal province so this movement at that time but happened in the territory that was in the bengal province right so this uh, major cause for this movement is colonial practice of forced indigo cultivation right so the british we can say uh, british authorities uh, or the british uh, commercial uh, we can say the british traders we can say they have forced the, the farmers to cultivate teen uh, <coughs> katiya i mean there is a system called teen katiya so 3 by 20th part so they have forced the farmers to cultivate three out of 20 parts uh, they have forced the farmers to cultivate the indigo uh, crop so because at that time industrialization was taking place and the cotton but cotton cloth or we can say cotton mills were being established in the europe at the cotton huge in huge amounts being produced at that time so they they needed indigo to color the cloth cloth to color the cotton cloth so they, because of that reason they have forced the indian farmers to uh, cultivate the indigo so that it can be taken away to the europe and uh, it it will be it can be used in the dyeing of the uh, cotton cloth so this is the reason behind the uh, or uh, the english traders trying to or forcing the indian farmers to cultivate the uh, indigo crop in the bengal region right so the causes if we see forced cultivation the british planters they have forced the indian farmers to cultivate indigo a cash crop with low profitability for the farmers right on a significant portion of the land so this term this system is come to be known as the teen katiya system teen katiya system so remember the name right so the indigo cultivation it required specific care and the techniques reducing the land available for food production and increasing the vulnerability of the farmers so this thing i have already explained so apart from that the british planters they have practices practiced the unfair practices right they have often resorted to unfair practices like ex extortionate pricing for indigo seeds and dyes and the violence to control the farmers they have resorted to control the uh, violence to control the farmers course of the revolt if you see it has began in the nadia district of bengal in march 1859 as a non violent movement right here the farmers refused to cultivate indigo and appeal, appealed the britishers british authorities to uh, for justice right further the movement quickly spread to indigo growing districts of bengal initially received uh, support from the many zamindars also who had began to resent the growing power of the planter right so apart from that many educated middle class bengalis they have also supported the cause and the indian newspaper journalists in calcutta they have reported the harshness of the indigo system right so impact of the indigo revolt if you see right so the impact though not achieving immediate large scale change it has a significant impact so it hi highlighted the exploitation it exposed the exploitation faced by the indian farmers under the british rule brought the issue uh, to the attention of the Brit in the i mean to the british parliament right 
uh, inspired it also inspired the future movements so we can say the rise of the mahatma gandhi rise of uh, mahatma gandhi he has resorted to champa satyagraha at champaran so it is one of his first movements first mass based movements initial movement champaran so mahatma mahatma gandhi so one journalist has invited mahatma gandhi to understand and uh, help the farmers address their issue so mahatma gandhi went there and uh, he surveyed and uh, he listened to entire farmers and uh, he sit on a satyagraha so the british has to accept and it has appointed a indigo commission so in that indigo commission mahatma gandhi himself was a member of that commission right the government appointed the indigo commission to investigate the investigate the grievances of the farmers the commissioners commission's report acknowledged the planters wrongdoings and recommended reforms into the indigo cultivation system right so here also uh, they have some uh, respect given to the farmers right so in this indigo commission mahatma gandhi was also a member uh, try to remember this point so after we can say it has happened during the uh, late 18th century so by the uh, coming of the 19th century right so the indigo planters uh, went away from india because by that time the chemical uh, we can say dyes the chemical dyes have been come into the markets and there was no need for cultivating uh, cultivating indigo uh, in the plantations so by uh, the end of 19 i mean we can say coming of the 1900s they have indigo planters have left india so with that we can say the cultivation of indigo crops has also died down in india right so this is about the indigo revolution right so there is a famous book uh, written by deen bandhu mitra deen bandhu mitra he has written a book called uh, neel darpan neel darpan so in this book he explained the hardship and the troubles of the indigo cult indigo farmers in this particular region so try to remember this book neel darpan it is written by deen bandhu mitra anand mat also you remember it is associated with the sanyasi rebellion right so this is about indigo <coughs> rebellion or indigo movement next another important movement uh, it happened in the southern india that is the dakkan riots or dakkan uprising also we will call it. so it also took place uh, during the period of 1875 right so it happened in the bombay uh, presidency present day maharashtra in of british india all right so the various reasons are majorly in this movement the money lenders have been targeted money lenders have been targeted the reasons are high land revenue right so the britishers have imposed a rigid land revenue system often demanding exorbitant taxes from the farmers so the taxes were based on unrealistic assessments and left little for little room for uh, subsistence even in the good years also so the farmers uh, are left with nothing to eat debt burden so a series of bad harvests and a crash uh, crash in cotton prices uh, following the american civil war end of the american civil war so you know very well cotton is one of the important crops so also uh, in usa so during the civil war the supply from uh, supply of cotton from usa has declined so there was increase uh, we can say doubling of prices for crop cotton crop in india so once the civil ha war has subsided again the prices have fallen for the cotton crop in india so that is also one reason right so they all these developments they have severely impacted the farmers incomes right many farmers were forced to borrow uh, heavily from the money lenders uh, at various uh, interest rates at uh, incre i mean high interest rates leading to a vicious cycle of debt for the farmers exploitation by money lenders so <coughs> these money lenders often in this re region they are known as shaukars 
so they wielded immense power in rural areas so they have charged ex exorbitant interest rates manipulated accounts and even resorted to coercive tactics to collect the debts so the, these are the causes of the uh, revolt so what happened during the movement so the farmers in that area they have attacked the shaukars or the money lenders so on may 12th 1875 uh, the uprising began in supa village pune district where farmers attacked the marketplace where the shaukars had their offices right they targeted the houses and the shops of the money lenders their primary aim was to destroy the debt records uh, held by the money lenders so this was the major uh, we can say uh, motive of the movement right spread uh, how the movement has spread so the movement has spread over to 30 villages in pure and ahmednagar districts villagers often boycotted money lenders and resorted to social ostracization uh, if they couldn't seize and destroy uh, records right so interestingly the village headmen who usually acted as intermediaries between the british and the farmers they led the uprising right so this highlights the desperation and widespread nature of the grievances of the rural people so outcome of the movement if you see the movement has uh, at the end has been suppressed by uh, british authorities deploying troops to quell the uprising right so however uh, the reforms have also been taken up by the britishers so uh, while immediate rebellion was crushed it forced the british government to acknowledge the severity of the agrarian crisis so because of that they have brought in the deccan agriculturalist reform relief act of 1879 so this act has been passed so it aimed at regulating money lenders activity and offer some relief to the indebted peasants right however the act's effective effectiveness effectiveness was only limited but however this particular has been brought to address the issues uh, uh, of the peasants to a uh, to a brief extent right so this is about the dakkan riots right next movement is pabna movement so it is also uh, pabna it is also known as pabna peace and uprising it has happened between 1873 and 1862 right so this is a resistance movement against exploitative practices of landlords and money lenders in uh, bangladesh uh, sorry bengal it falls under the present day bangladesh right land revenue system you know very well the british have implemented a land revenue system bengal that placed a heavy tax burden on the peasants apart from that you will also see exploitative zamindars in the region so they were a dominating land owning community so in the bengal you will see uh, the majorly the issues with the zamindars because the zamindars zamindari system was uh, prevalent in that region bengal bihar and odisha regions at that time so apart from that you will also see debt burden on the peasants so organization and leadership you see pabna riots uh, league has started uh, in 1873 uh, right so peasants in this yusuf sahi pargana uh, they have formed this organization pabna riots league and they have led the movement right so this league played a crucial role in mobilizing the peasants against the uh, <coughs> uh, british authorities leadership has been provided by ishan chandra rai uh, he was a key figure in the movement right he was also known as bidrohi raja rebel king right he was a zamindar himself who sympathized with the plight of the peasants right so course of the movement they have initially they were non violent protests social boycott of uh, zamindars and money lenders has happened petitions and uh, appeals have been made so at the end of the impact we see limited success only we will see so britishers response is initially the british government under uh, sir george campbell it adopted a conciliatory approach promising to protect the peasants from the exploitant <coughs> demands right 
so apart from that uh, the later part of the uh, course of the movement the britishers have resorted to violence and they have i mean mobilized the police and the military and they have suppressed the movement right apart from that uh, there was a severe famine in the 1873-1874 and uh, because also the internal divisions within the movement it ha they have weakened the movement right so this is about the pabna movement right next another important rebellion that has happened in the uh, southern india especially in the present day kerala region kerala state present day kerala state the mapilla rebellion has occurred right so this uh, present i mean this has uh, uh, directed uh, against the british rule earlier uh, Mop mopilas or mapilas there are different uh, names for this community it is also known as mopla mapila or mopila so be careful or be aware of all these we can say alternative names so these uh, mapilas or mopilas were uh, uh, muslim peasants muslim peasants and uh, the landlords here were landlords here were the hindu landlords here were the hindus so basically you know very well the entire india the peasants had grievances against the landlords so here also the muslim peasants they had grievances against the landlords so in the initial period the uh, movement was between them only the i mean the uh, the movement was secular the peasants were fighting against the landlords however in the later part of the movements it has assumed communal color it has assumed communal color and it has given uh, the shape of or identity or the color of communal color so it has seen as a hindu muslim conflict so in the initial period so this movement it was occurring during the 1921 earlier also during 1870s etc there were a uh, few movements few rebellions from the mapilla farmers but however the movement occurred during 1920s it was very very important so at this time the non cooperation movement ncm was also taking place uh, the congress uh, leaders they have extended their support to the mapilas uh, the peasants who were revolting against the or rebelling against the zamindar however once the communal color is given to this movement the ncm or the congress leaders have also Uh, withdrew their support to the movement right so i think two years also one two three uh, one or two years also this news uh, this uh, incident or this movement particular movement was in news because a particular movie has been made uh, based on this movement only taking theme from this movement so there was lot of opposition for the movie and uh, some other directors they have told that they are also going to uh, i mean uh, produce an another movie which will be a counter to the existing movie so try to i mean this movement uh, was a, was in news 1 uh, to 2 years back so try to remember these aspects so try to remember the facts about the movement there is a chance that the movement can be asked in the question right so participants if you see the pa participants were mapilas or moplas also they are called as they are malayali muslims who felt economically and politically marginalized many were peasants facing tenancy issues with hindu landlords causes are anti colonial sentiment is there right uh, khilafat movement so khilafat movement and ncm non cooperation moving uh, movement was taking place so they have taken inspiration from there also right so somewhat the khilafat movement also uh, inspired uh, them right agrarian grievances so apart from that the previous uh, peasant grievances were also there so they were uh, they were opposing the exploitative practices of hindu landlords course of the rebellion august 1921 the rebellion erupted in response to the arrest of khilafat leaders so initial targets of the rebel rebels are police stations government offices and the symbols of Brit british authority right attacks and uh, attacks on landlords have also taken place 
so this movement took a socio economic dimension with attacks on hindu landlords seen as oppressors so this led to violence against hindus and the destruction of temples right so british response the british deployed troops to crush the rebellion uh, the suppression involved heavy handed tactics and resulted in casualties so in this uh, many number of mappilas have died many number of mappilas have died so a kind of terror has struck the mappilas uh, peasants so since then they have completely withdrawn the movement so since then you will not see till the independence you will not see any resistance from the mappilas so because of the use of excessive force by the britishers they have a kind of fear has struck the uh, mappila peasants right impact of the movement so loss of life there are many mappilas have died because of the british uh, uh, we can say british force communal tensions have uh, arisen in this movement all right uh, government reforms the rebellion exposed the agrarian issues and led to some reforms in the tenancy law right so this is the <coughs> right so this is about the movement so there is a debate and a controversy about the movement so uh, some view that it is primarily as an anti colonial movement while others emphasize the role of social and economic factors also right so this is there so in the later part of the movement the movement has assumed the color of uh, communalism so this is uh, this is the movement so one two years back this also it was also in news so try to be aware of the movement right next uh, important movement tibaga movement so it has happened just before the independence so this movement and also the movement of telangana armed struggle so these two movements have occurred just before the occurrence of the independence uh, even the telangana armed struggle movement it has continued even after the independence also so because of these two uh, reasons the movements two movements the baga movement and the telangana armed struggle they become very very important right the baga movement so <coughs> this <coughs> movement also we will see it has arisen in the bengal background of the movement so in bengal share cropping system was uh, in vogue in certain uh, pockets of land so in bengal many farmers did not own land uh, but they cultivate and it under a shared cropping system share cropping it is known as share cropping or locally it is also called as adihar right so under this system uh, they shared the harvest with the land owner he is also known as the jotedar typically dividing it to equally half was going to the share cropper the farmer peasant and uh, another half was going to the jotedar or the land owner however the jotedars demanded that two third of the share shall be given to them and one third shall go to the farmers so because of this reason also the movement is named as tibaga means three parts so among these three parts two parts will go to the uh ji uh, jotedar or land owner and one part will go to the peasant so the farmers or peasants have resisted this the share croppers have resisted this demand so the tibaga demand or tebaga demand if you see two thirds share uh, which translates into two thirds it demanded that share croppers receive i mean the share croppers want that they should get two thirds of the crop yield while the remaining one third should go to the land owner so this aim to provide a more equitable share for the farmers who did the actual labor right so it is initiated by kisan sabha kisan sabha you will study in the major uh, major national or national movement or freedom struggle the kisan sabha will come to play an important role in the national movement so the movement has actually been initiated by the kisan sabha uh, the all india kisan sabha right so it is the uh, uh, peasant wing of the communist party of india right so it played the key role in the movement right so course of the movement if you see it has began in the districts of north bengal and spread to other parts direct action so the share cropper started harvesting crops and keeping two thirds for themselves 
denying the traditional share copying agreement right so the movement also involved protests marches and sometimes uh, confrontations with the landowners right so the british authorities responded with arrest and the crackdown of the movement right so limited uh, we will see a limited success of the movement in the initial period however uh, burger uh, bergadari act has been brought in uh, after the independence uh, as part of the land reforms in the 1950 right so uh, it led to the movement also continued after the independence and it led to the uh, enactment of bergadari act of 1950 so this act provided legal rights to share croppers including security of tenure and a fixed share of the crop right so apart from that the movement also helped highlight the uh, agrarian issues in the country so we can say for bringing the land reforms in the country we will say this act also uh, sorry this movement also helped a lot creating or we can say bringing forth the issues of the farmers so because of this reason also the issue of tenancy reforms tenancy reforms has become one of the important aspects of the land reforms uh, that were taken place uh, immediately after the independence right so telangana movement uh, very very important movement in the history of india not only in history of india we can consider uh, in the uh, all over world movements also where people have taken arms for their rights so when the when they are suppressed violently and they when they when people are subjected to atrocities people have taken arms so in this way we can say people have revolted for their rights so it can be considered as one of the important movements not only in Indi indian history but also in the across the world also it can be put uh, in uh, along with the other important uh, movements where people have arisen for their rights so the movement has actually initially started against the uh, you can say tyrannical rule of nizam uh, we, and also the authorities of nizam especially uh, during the i mean during the uh, independence time the nizam do not wanted to include his uh, hyderabad state in the independent india either he wanted to remain independent as a separate country or he wanted to join the pakistan so uh, to resist uh, the i mean the forces that are or the movements that are wanting hyderabad state to join in india so to uh, to fight against them or to suppress them a militia razakars a razakars which is a militia force has been initiated by the nizam or his prime minister uh, especially the prime minister uh, of hyderabad state so this razakars have uh, resorted to atrocities against the uh, innocent people in rural areas of the hyderabad state so initially the peasant armed struggle so the peasants have also taken arms to fight and secure themselves against these razakars armed militia and uh, initially this uh, movement is targeted against them so however these people in this effort have been actively supported by the communist party of india cpi was uh, providing leadership to this movement right so initially this uh, movement was against the nizam right so it is a very uh, important movement with the social political and economic dimensions also background of the movement right so it was a hyderabad state was a princely state under the british rule which was ruled by british right so the population however predominantly hindu with a significant telugu speaking population in the telangana region right so the uh, nizam's rule was marked by feudal practices heavy taxes and exploitation of peasants by landlords here the landlords are known with as the duras right so who were mostly muslims right so apart from that the telangana region specially known for under development and the neglect in terms of uh, development causes of the movement so the oppression by the duras and also the authorities 
so the telangana people were burdened by high rents forced labor it is known as vetti so people are sub subjected to uh, provide free labor to the zamindars that is known as vetti right uh, it we can say it is a form of slavery only some form of slavery only right apart from that anti nizam sentiment was also taking place because most of the people were uh, they want they wanted to join in the newly formed uh, independent india but nizam he he is adamant and he was against joining in india and he wanted to join in the pakistan right so this also fueled a desire for uh, self -determin uh, determination right so course of the movement if you see the communist party of india it mobilized the peasants in telangana forming armed squads who resi who resisted exploitation by landlords and nizams forces that those forces are known as razakars so the farmer bands or armed bands it have they have resorted to guerrilla warfare attacking landlords seizing grain stores and establishing parallel governments in the villages right so the nizam's uh, government responded with a brutal force using razakars escalating violence in the region so in the course of the movement you will see lot of bloodshed you know many innocent people have been killed by the this militia this razakar force apart from that the armed bands or armed squads of peasants they have also attacked the gadis or fortresses small fortresses of the duras zamindars and uh, the many duras have uh, <coughs> uh, left left their places and the land and the grain occupied by these uh, uh, armed squads it has been distributed among the people right so end of the movement so after independence also uh, strangely the communist party of india the major i mean the central leadership the highest leadership it uh, decided to continue the movement even after the independence and the libera liberation of the uh, hyderabad state from the nizam so after that uh, sardar vallabhai patel he as the farmers he assured the farmers that the troubles will be resolved and the land reforms will be brought in still the communist party of india decided to continue the movement uh, this particular uh, decision has been taken by the top leadership not by the local leader uh, local communist party leaders so this we can say uh, we can say error in the decision so they have continue they have decided to continue their fight even after the achieving independence so indian intervention following india's independence in 1947 indian government pressured the nizam to integrate uh, hyderabad into india the nizam decided against it again uh, decided against it so the indian army launched operation polo to annex hyderabad state right so once the hyderabad state has been integrated with the indian union cpi it faced a uh, dilemma and it decided to uh, <coughs> continue the movement for some time and this uh, movement has been suppressed by indian army afterwards so by the end of by the uh, 1951 the movement has been suppressed right so this is also this movement also telangana armed style uh, armed struggle along with the tibaga movement it has forced kind of forced the nehruvian government uh, or the government of nehru to bring in the land reforms immediately immediately after the land reforms so you will see immediately after the independence one of the major initiatives major focus of the government was newly formed government was for the reforms uh, or land reforms right so this is about the uh, telangana movement so this telangana movement it remains a significant chapter in the indian history highlighting the issues of land reform social justice and the regional identity right now we will see a question from this topic it is asked in 2020 right question is indigo cultivation in india declined by the beginning of the 20th century because of which of the following reasons peasant resistance to oppressive to oppressive conduct of planters yes factually if you see plainly this is a statement correct statement but this is not the reason for decline 
the reason for decline is another so b statement b is its uh, unprofitability in the world market because of new inventions so i have mentioned this plant uh, uh, point so by the beginning of the 20th century the synthetic uh, dyes have come into the market so there was no need or there was practically uh, there was no need for cultivating indigo plantation anymore so that is the major reason for a decline of indigo cultivation in india next is national leaders opposition to the cultivation of indigo so if you see plainly this statement is also correct government control over the planter so all these uh, statements are correct if you see plainly but uh, according to the context the reason for declining is this reason only coming up of the synthetic dyes into the market so the leaders were opposing the indigo cultivation governments also controlled uh, farmers also resisting but even after all these things the indigo cultivation did not go away uh, till the 1900s because there is there was need for indigo and uh, indigo cultivation was going on in the uh, present day bengal bihar and odisha regions only with the arrival of the synthetic uh, dyes into the market the indigo cultivation has been died down all right so in this context also remember the indigo rebellion okay right so this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day